see here at the NASDAQ where we tape opening bid. New note out on NVIDIA for you, and I'll set it up this way. You call it a generational opportunity. Unpack this for us. Sure, I think um, you know we are in front of a generational opportunity because it's not every day you go and get a chance to re-architect um, the plumbing um, right, of the computing infrastructure. Um, this is what we saw back uh, in uh, the late 80s when the internet started. Um, that um, you know there was a small movement in the Department of Defense and then gradually it reached the commercial stage and every year there were questions about you know what are the returns on investment but what we saw during that nearly 10 to 20 year phase was new business models get uh, created you know Amazon came out Google came out you know meta uh, came out right Microsoft changed its entire way of doing business so with these things you know they take place over a period of decades Right? And it's not always apparent in the first one or two years what shape they're going to take. But what is key to them is that there is a creation of a new computing infrastructure. And what we have learned over time is that the more computing you give to companies, to application uh, developers, to the software industry, the more new business models they are going to create. And I think that's where we are today, that this thing called chat GPT or open AI, I know it seems like it has been with us for a long time, but the application really only came out in November 22. It does feel like forever. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, we have only been here for about two years. If you look back at when NVIDIA started to report their very big quarters, it was May 23. So it's just been a year and a half, and we are trying to predict the peak of this uh, cycle, which is why I think that it's a generational opportunity to re-architect the plumbings of this to something that is far more computational intensive. And uh, my hope is that just like we saw with the prior re-architecting, which gave rise to very important business models, which by the way were not apparent, right? In f even in the first decade, I think this thing is gonna give rise to something that is similarly equally good and productive, um, right, for the entire global economy. Uh, before we get into- With its amazing market capitalization of $3.4 trillion, NVIDIA is well positioned to threaten Apple's market position, which is currently held by the company at $3.5 trillion. Large investments in NVIDIA's AI-centric GPUs by well-known tech companies like Microsoft and Amazon have helped the company soar to a $3.5 trillion market valuation. The company's AI chips, especially its most recent models that are essential to AI computing and architecture, are in more demand, according to recent financial results. NVIDIA has experienced steady growth and can be regarded as a rival to Apple, becoming the most valuable corporation in the world as deep learning has grown in importance in the artificial intelligence space. With strong growth and sound financials, NVIDIA holds a crucial position in the AI hardware industry. This stock has the potential to overtake Apple as the most valuable corporation by force. NVIDIA's involvement as a trailblazing business in the next wave of AI innovation, along with higher R&D expenditures in cutting-edge machine learning technology and better data center solutions, further enhances this competitive advantage. This is in addition to the business's emphasis on ethical and sustainable AI applications, which is a global trend. This primary source demonstrates how the company's current market dynamics and strategic adaption to the demands of these markets not only improve its market position, but also establish it as the main force behind technological advancements in the future. If you want to keep up with NVIDIA's latest updates and keep up with the stock market latest news, you can subscribe to our investing tutorial channel as we post daily updates about the biggest changes and catalyst in the market. So click the subscribe button if you don't want to miss the newest market updates. Now back to today's video. Uh, before we get into more of the, the drivers or behind your call, 190 price target, about, let's say 40% upside from current level. So a, a good price target there. Take us through your process. What is it like as an analyst on Wall Street covering the world's most popular stock, if not company? Sure. Um, you know, where we spend 90% of our time is interestingly, um, right, not on valuation per se, because I think that, especially with uh, technology stocks, um, valuation sometimes is a lagging indicator, right? So it's interesting that I, I mentioned that uh, Chat GPT came out on November 30th, 22. NVIDIA was actually trading at a higher multiple that day than it is trading today. So that tells you that you know, when these stocks look the most expensive, what they're really signaling is that their opportunity 
is getting much bigger and their competitive position is improving. So sometimes it's actually better to buy or better to consider technology stocks that are trading at higher multiples than lower multiples, right? Because these stocks have a way of sniffing out the future, right, if you will. But very specifically, our process is that, you know, we still need to have some laws of gravity in place, nothing, you know, goes. Go. So we do, you know, two to three year earnings models and we come out with an earnings kager and we say that a semiconductor company, so I cover a mix of semiconductor and some um, design tool software, the EDA companies, and we say that semiconductor companies, they should trade between one to two times earnings growth in that. So let's say if we do a three-year earnings model for NVIDIA, um, let's say we are able to come up with a 25% earnings kager during that time frame. Compound annual growth. Compound annual growth. So in my mind, any time NVIDIA's valuation is between 25 times to 50 times, right? The PE multiple has no predictive value. Mm -hmm. It just tells you it is. NVIDIA has risen more than 180% this year and reached an all-time high on Monday. However, stockholders might question whether NVIDIA is still a good investment today. Market leaders often create a new base with a suitable buy point that permits a new entry and don't give up much, even after a huge rise. Leaders typically rank highly among other stocks as well. The stock may potentially change in response to earnings. Here is a brief summary of some NVIDIA stock metrics. In addition to its composite rating of 99, NVIDIA's stock has an ideal EPS rating of 99. However, funds have recently been hesitant to purchase the shares. On a scale of A plus to E, the accumulation slash distribution rating, which accounts for fund acquisitions for the last 13 weeks, is only a D. Analysts remain optimistic, though. Bank of America analysts maintained a buy rating on NVIDIA late Thursday, increasing their price target from 165 to 190. On October 23, Tesla, one of the Magnificent Seven stocks, will release its third quarter earnings. However, when Alphabet reports on October 29 and Microsoft and Meta on October 30, NVIDIA's price may move. Both Apple and Amazon have set October 31 as the date for their September quarter reports. On November 20, investors also expect NVIDIA's fiscal third quarter results. Following Taiwan Semiconductor's earnings report that showed a 54.2% year-over-year increase, NVIDIA's stock passed a trendline entry near 139.60 in early trading on Thursday. Apple and NVIDIA both purchase AI chips from Taiwan Semi. However, after chip gear leader ASNL let investors down with its outlook, shares dropped by over 5% on Tuesday. News that the company's shipments of sophisticated semiconductors would face additional limitations also caused shares to drop. There are currently sales limitations on NVIDIA's AI chip shipments to 40 nations, and they might soon be extended to the Persian Gulf. Reports state that talks about new limits are still in their early stages. So what does this really mean for NVIDIA's stock? Let's find out. But first, if you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make. So if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow that said back to the video. In the zone. So NVIDIA is just detached from valuation. Well, not detached from valuation. See, ultimately, the real focus is on making that earnings growth prediction because that is where we can get a lot of things right, but also a lot of things wrong. So that is where I think the focus has to be, as opposed to saying, you know, 30 is the right multiple or 40 is the right multiple, because that is really the end part, right, of the process. It's not the start of the process to pick a random stock and say, oh, 30 PE is good or better because it's above or below the market. That, that's not the case, right, at all. Do an earnings kager, right, do one to two times uh, earnings growth. When it is close to one time, you can see in the last five years, NVIDIA has consistently bottomed at about 24, 25 times earnings. That's not an accident, mm -hmm. right? Because that is its earnings growth profile. And generally, when it gets to like mid 40s to 50 times, that's when it starts to peak, unless earnings growth um, right, gets revised upward. So one to two times, I think it is as, as easy as that in, in our approach. You're not there now, of course. You came out here with a $190 price target. Will a downgrade be one of the toughest decisions that you've ever made in, in your career? I mean, because, I mean, this is the world's most popular company. Right. 
Yeah, you know, we have, um, uh, we at, at uh, you know, BFA, we have a cluster, um, right, where we uh, have a certain distribution of buys and, and neutrals and, and underperform. So uh, we follow that. And um, it, it's really about trying to say that within our cluster, right, what stocks can outperform, right, the average, what stocks will underperform that average. But no, I agree that um, you know, uh, in, with any of these growth stocks, right, whether it is this or, or, or Broadcom or you know, AMD or, or Marvell, that I think some of these companies are right at the epicenter of changing this technology. So my hope is, of course, we want to get these stocks right because ultimately that's the, that's the role right, that we have. But I hope that we do a better job of making sure that we are getting the theme right uh, because I would rather be a little early, right, to, to a theme than be very late, um, right, to a theme. So trying to predict these uh, themes early and then just sticking with them, unless, you know, either the theme breaks or the execution uh, breaks, right, then of course we can always revisit our, our views. But I agree Or Jensen right? retires and moves to a, 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 an yeah. island out there somewhere and enjoys uh, his life. Let's go through some of the, the drivers behind this. Right now, you have the street is focused, I would argue, on Blackwell. It seems like they've gotten any production issues out of the way. You know, they highlighted that, what, a couple, maybe a quarter ago. What do you see over the next two quarters in terms of Blackwell demand? And do you think it will really surprise the street like prior iterations of the technology did? Yeah, so it's interesting that um, the demand for their hopper generation is still very good. Mm -hmm. Right. Investors who do not own NVIDIA stock may naturally feel as though they have lost out. After all, the stock price has increased by 543% over the last three years and by 243% in the last year alone. But instead of focusing on the past, let's look to the future to see if there is still more space for it to run. NVIDIA is a corporation that does more than just artificial intelligence, AI. In the most recent quarter, each of its four business segments saw both sequential quarterly revenue growth and year-over-year -year gains. The fastest-growing data center market is the one that caters to the expanding need for sophisticated AI computer chips, and there might be many more to come. Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, said back in February that the installed base of data centers is worth roughly $1 trillion. We will have $2 trillion worth of data centers that will power software globally over the next four or five years. The market value of NVIDIA is currently over $3.4 trillion. However, if he is correct, that would represent a substantial increase in sales for the unchallenged AI leader. Additionally, there is mounting proof that Huan's forecast is coming true. Microsoft has provided investors with a glimpse of the explosive growth in its data center spending. Microsoft stated in its most recent 10K annual report for fiscal year 2024, which concluded in June, that it has financial leasing commitments for data centers totaling $108.4 billion that will start over the following five years. These leases will last for up to 20 years, which is over $100 billion more than it was two years ago. The rapid expansion of AI data centers was not anticipated by many investors. However, there appears to be a lot of room for growth in that market, which makes purchasing NVIDIA stock at this time a wise decision. Remember that as self-driving car technology advances and companies look for greater automation, other industries like robotics and automotive may follow.